Yes, our God is a mountain mover, and you know what? He's still moving mountains every day. And the good news is he can move your mountains too. Hi there. This is Chuck Cooper, host of It's a God Thing radio program. Thank you for joining us today. We sure are glad you're here. You're about to listen to some awesome interviews with believers in Jesus Christ who will tell you how God has revealed and proved himself to them by moving mountains they were unable to move by themselves. They say that their stories can only be described as a God thing. Ready for a real blessing? All righty then, let's do this God thing. In 2007, Dillard and Jane Wilbanks built what they thought was going to be their longtime retirement home in Lake Whitney, Texas. But God had other plans. You see, in 2010, everything they owned, including two automobiles, was destroyed by an unexpected flood. Here is their fascinating story about how God provided provisions for them and provided also a new home in their native coming Georgia. Well, welcome to our program today. Tell us what happened. On September 7th of uh, 2010, Tropical Storm Hermine uh, moved on shore uh, in Texas and began to rain in the afternoon and was still raining when Jane and I uh, retired uh, to go uh, to bed about 10 o'clock, 10.30 that evening. It had rained all night, but uh, we slept through it and didn't realize the extent of the rain. So about five o'clock, Jane had gotten up and looked out the back to the creek and saw that it was still in its banks. And about 6.30, between 6.30 and 7 o'clock, I got up at my usual time. When I stepped into the kitchen, I stepped in water. Oh, my goodness. And Jane, why don't you pick it up at that point? What's your reaction? Well, I was asleep, but I could and I could hear uh, someone walking through water, and I kept thinking, "This is a dream. This has got to be a dream." Right. Well, it wasn't. Uh, the water had uh, entered the house and actually was just really just beginning to pour in rapidly. Uh, in the meantime, this water continued to rise. And it was rising at about uh, a foot every half hour. My gosh. So after <laughs> it began to rise above our, our, our ankles, we put on our, our rubber boots that we used with the grandkids playing in the creek. Uh, and as it approached the top of the, of the boots, uh, we determined that we really were in trouble. And so uh, I made my way out to the garage. I was going to see where we were in relation to the automobiles. Well, the water was up, had seeped in there under the garage door and was up to the, almost to the tailpipes. So I thought, okay, I have to put towels or something in those tailpipes uh, to keep the water out. Well, about that time, the garage door collapsed. Oh, my goodness. From the, uh, from the, from the waters and not the, necessarily the height, but just the, the, the flow, sure, uh, the pressure. And so that brought all that water into the garage. I had the kitchen door open, so that led it all into the kitchen. Oh, me. And uh, I was calling for Jane to come and help me get the kitchen door closed because of the force of the water. I couldn't, I couldn't even, even close it. Well, I'll quickly go back to the kitchen door. I was trying to help him close the kitchen door, and our garbage can came floating in, and just all kinds of stuff from the garage came oh, floating boy. in, so it was quite an experience. Now, let me ask you a question. Okay. Because of the rising water in the garage, y'all were not able to escape by car. Right. Is that correct? Right. So you were right. trapped at a right. house yeah. yes. where the water level was rising about a foot every half hour. Right, and we could not walk out. There, it, the water was just too swift. Too swift. It was like a raging river. Yeah. And we couldn't call out because uh, our, our phone line was dead. And oh, my. And where we lived, it required a 3G microcell booster to get a <laughs> cell phone out. And it had been unplugged as well. Uh, and just to, to back up, uh, you reminded me of this, Jane. The first thing I did when I realized what was happening, I went to the phone to try to call uh, the rest- restoration company that I had used back when we just had the, right. you know, the, the the lower water in the home. Well, that's when I determined the phone line was dead. Oh, and so my thought was, okay, if, uh, if I can't get hold of a restoration company, I'm going to go to the end of the line by the time I can get to a telephone. And it may be weeks before I can get anybody in mm-hmm. here because if this is happening across Texas, oh yes, uh, we're going to be in real trouble because black mold was a real problem in Texas from from moisture, and so I had just you know I just already gave up on that. I grabbed a small overnight bag and started 
packing a few items, knowing that at some point we were going to have to get out of there. Um, I jokingly say the first thing I put in the bag was my makeup <laughs> <laughs> and all of my cosmetics. Um, anyway, got, I had that partially packed. Um, I'm not a professional photographer, but I do like to take pictures, so I grabbed my camera, I ran through the house, or waded through the house, and took as many pictures as I could, um, just you know, just to show exactly what was taking place. Um, at some point, we decided that we needed to, to get ourselves up on our bed. We had one of those uh, four-poster beds oh, yeah. very high, so we got up on that and sat there and watched um, filthy, muddy water flow by outside through our windows and then also watched as it rose inside the house. Yeah. Now, we were just sitting on the bed, <laughs> yeah. uh, not knowing what was next. Um, I will say this, I never became frightened, and I think that was because we were so busy mm -hmm. taking care of things and trying to get things off, up off of the floor and um, just out of out of the path of the water. So there was no panic? No panic. No. <laughs> No, and, and and that's not the end of that story, but that's the, that was, this is the beginning of it. Because, and, and again, at that point, I thought, well, maybe we're just so busy, you know, and looking back right. on it, maybe we just don't have time to think Well, you were about doing it. all maybe the right things, realize, it sounds you know, maybe like. Maybe we just don't realize what, you know, what's going on here. At that point, maybe that was, that was uh, in, in thinking back over it. As Jane said, uh, before we, we went to get back, get up on the bed, I looked out the front and, and all I could see was the road, the, 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 the street that we were on, because everything between us and there was just a raging river. Oh, my goodness. But the elevation was such that it had not covered, it, the, road not covered yet. the road. And I saw a guy get in a pickup and, and drive off. So I told Jane, I said, okay, somebody knows what our situation is, because there were no houses on either side of us. Right. Uh, we were in a wooded area. So somebody knows what's going on, so uh, I assumed somebody would be in touch. Well, uh, we weren't on the bed all that long, uh, just a few minutes, and I heard a banging on the front door. And the boys on the other side said, we're from the Hill, uh, from the Hill County High Water Rescue, and we need to get you out of that house. Mm. So uh, uh, we uh, <laughs> opened the door, and then all the rest of the water came, came flooding yeah, in right? the front door. Uh, but these guys were, were so professional. They had life vest uh, for us to put on. Uh, they had tied a rope from the street to the trees to the front column of our house uh, for, for us to use as a guideline sure. to go out. And now, what time of day was this? This was early morning. Early morning. Yeah, early morning. Uh, after day, after yeah. daybreak. But so it, you can it see. It was still early morning, yeah. You can see at this point. Okay, so we get in the uh, fire truck and they ask us where we want to go. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, we hadn't thought about that. Right. So uh, I said, initially, we'll just, you know, you can just take us over to the fire department so we can dry out, but then... Uh, you tell us about, tell them about the Hendrix, uh, our friends. Well, there. we have had a some friends in the neighborhood who are originally from Georgia. So when we first met them, we had a lot in common. Um, they had become close friends. Uh, he also taught the Sunday school class that we had been in. We were in a different church by this time. Um, we felt free enough just to go to their house and say, can we come in? And, and they were flooded? They were not flooded. No, it was mostly our street. They were not flooded. Uh, she was at home because she works from home. We did not expect him to be there, but he was because he can get out of the subdivision that day because of, of the, the high waters. So, of course, they welcomed us with open arms. Uh, they had an upstairs in their house that was not being used and told us we could stay there as long as we needed to. Oh, good so for So that's them. where we parked for the next two weeks, maybe. Yeah. Were we there two Pretty weeks? Close to two weeks. Close to two weeks. Well, how long was it before the water began to subside and you could get back to your home? Uh, mid afternoon. It was about, well. My memory is that it was uh, about one thirty. Okay, early afternoon. So it rose quickly. Yeah, and, and then, then it receded then quickly. It stayed, yeah, and it, left all the mud. It, it, it didn't recede until it didn't start receding until about noon. Oh, okay. And then, then once it started receding, it receded rather quickly. And and uh, the the first intervention that you know that we can identify as as God's intervention. 
uh, well, it would be the second, uh, or the, the Hendrix just saying here, here as long as you need to be was, was the first one. But as we, as we recount all of these instances, it, it's really the church being the church, not a building, but people. Right. Because every intervention in this whole process involved a, a, a Christian, a believer. Wow, what a great story. It's our hope that you have been inspired, encouraged, awed, and intrigued by what you heard today. We earnestly pray that hearing these stories as a regular listener to our program will be a source of hope and encouragement to you, that these stories will strengthen your faith in God and will lead you to a closer walk with Jesus. Whether you're a believer in Jesus Christ or a not yet believer, we pray that you will reflect on the God thing incidents in your own life and conclude that it was God at work and that he was knocking on your door. Now, let's get back to today's program. Well, let's get to that intervention, but I, I want to ask you a question first. What was your reaction when the water finally receded enough so you could go back to your home, and you saw your home, and you saw the, that uh, where the water damage had been or how high the water had risen? What was your, each of you, what was your first reaction? Well, it just was, it was really sad, not to the point that I was crying or anything like that, but just to see everything covered with mud, which is filthy, filthy mud, um, and not really knowing what, what came next in, right. our, in our situation. I have never been one of these people who was so attached to my stuff that I couldn't let it go. And that was really a blessing because uh, even though I miss many of my beautiful things, my beautiful furniture, uh, some pieces that were had belonged to our parents even uh, that were destroyed, um, I never was overwhelmed with Good all that. You. That may and, have been a God there, thing. That is a God thing in for itself. a woman. Yes, it is. I was <laughs> about to say that. It is for her because this was the first custom built home we'd ever been able to build. Oh boy! And the only one that we'd ever had where she just really had it furnished exactly like she wanted to furnish, decorated the way she wanted it decorated. And uh, well, Willer, what was your reaction when you got to the house? I think it was more shock. Uh, I think I probably shared the reaction of the of the other people. Uh, in the neighborhood, including from the, the White Bluff Chapel there, where uh, uh, we were we were attending at the time, uh, the pastor and some laymen came by. But everybody who came, when they walked in the front door, they said, "We just were not prepared for this." Ooh, my goodness! We just, well, how could you prepare for it? We just could it? not yeah. imagine the damage that, that right. has been done to this to this home. And so, uh, the, the the next intervention. Uh, I had thought, as I said earlier, when I couldn't get a hold of the restoration company, I just knew we were really in trouble. Sure. Uh, so we had been at the Hendrix uh, maybe a couple of three hours, and the phone rang. I uh, was able to get a signal there. And, uh, and the young voice on the other end identified himself. And he's, uh, he said, you know, I don't know if you're aware, but I'm with a restoration company out of Waco. And I can have a team in your house by the time that water recedes. How did he know? That's interesting. <laughs> the Cowboy Church, the open range yes, Cowboy uh -huh. Church, was pastored by our, our neighbor to the north, the, the first house right. to the north of us. And on that morning, he drove by and was on his way to the church for a meeting with this guy who was an elder. My goodness. And he said, I don't know if you're aware or not, but here's what I saw when I drove by the Wilbanks this morning. My goodness me. And, and they did. They had a team in there by the time that order receded. Uh, and they had a team of four to six. It took them an entire week. To clean it to up? To clean it out. Get, get it dry clean it out. Get the wall board cut up five feet so that they could dry everything out. And, and so that was the, uh, that was the, you know, the, the first, second, third <laughs> intervention. That My we saw. goodness here again, me. It was a pastor. It was an elder in the church. Right. The Hendricks were Christians. And so when we got back there again and started looking this thing over, the good news was we didn't have to determine, you know, where are we going to go? 
Right. Because we'd already determined, you know, well, we put the house on the market. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not I see. Yeah. We take it by storm. Right. Uh, and so uh, the, the first question was, what are we going to do here? You know, what are we going to do Correct. with this house? Because your house is up for sale. And so I, uh, uh, yeah, and, and we were just grateful nobody bought it because we almost had a contract the week before. Mm. And uh, although, obviously, it wouldn't have closed by that time. Sure. You know, we would have been assuming we were out of here, and then it would have been. Right. So we were grateful that it hadn't sold. So anyway, uh, I asked the guy to go ahead and begin and, and, fig- and give us an estimate of what it was going to take to put it back. Sure. So we would know exactly what we were, what we were looking at, and he did a line item of that. And so I knew we could not put that much money back in that house. Uh, and if we and did, recoup it. If, if we did, who would ever buy it? Right. Uh, so interestingly, I, uh, I priced it just and I said, you know, if we can walk away from here on level ground, we'll be blessed. So if I can get what little we owe the mortgage out of it, uh, get what we've had to pay for, for the drying out, the restoration, at least we can walk away. Sure. Within a week, I suppose, I had a, a phone call from uh, from uh, one of our, our long-term friends in, in Georgia, in Jonesboro. And he said, I, now, I want you to listen to me. He knew me pretty well, and he knew it was hard for me to accept things. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I want you to listen to me carefully, and I want you to really pray about this. He said, we still have our home in Jonesboro. We're in Florida 90% of the time. I really, really would like for you and Jane to come and house sit for us oh as long goodness. as you need. If it's two years, if it's three years, whatever oh you need. Oh, my goodness. Whatever you need. He said it's fully furnished. You can have the upstairs. We've got a self contained downstairs. Uh, and when we're there, we'll enjoy visiting with you. But other than that, the only, only stipulation I'll have is that you make it your home. Mm. And he wouldn't let us pay anything, any expenses. Oh, my nothing. gosh. So that um, that proved to be a blessing because it took any pressure off. That sure. That decision, what we were going to do. Uh, it gave us uh, the time that we needed to close out there uh, to get that sale closed. And then to uh, to begin to think about, okay, what, what can we, we do? We didn't have a whole lot to move. Did we you? didn't have a lot to move. Uh, and uh, and it was about a quarter of a million dollar, two, yeah, a quarter of a million dollar loss. Mm. We had about two hundred thousand dollars equity in that home, and uh, and obviously not in a floodplain. We didn't have flood insurance. Yes. So with our furnishings gone and the house gone, uh, you know, it, it was really uh, going to take continued intervention of the Lord <laughs> to, for us to be able to do anything. Sure. And. Uh, and at this point, we I understand. I, I, I'm anticipating the story's getting ready to get better. <laughs> and so early on, early on in this thing, uh, the, the White Bluff Chapel there just sent out an email into the community letting folks know what happened. Right. Uh, the first, the second day after they came, the first day they brought brought a check, uh, and then by the end of that week, they brought a substantial check that had just come in just from that email that they mm. sent out in the community. So that was the first indication, okay, you know, the Lord's going to provide. You know, just just wait on the Lord. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and so then uh, another church where I had served on staff had gotten this word. They didn't make a public appeal, but within a very few weeks, a, another substantial offering had come in. Mm. And there was yet another one still to come. Goodness me. And these were from people, you know, who we had known through the years. There was never any effort on our part to solicit anything. Uh, there was never a public appeal uh, from a pulpit for anything. Right. But just through that network of, of fellow Christians and fellow believers, it was one of those situations, like that first century church, when they, they saw a need, they, uh, they met that need. And it really was only through their generous generosity and God's grace that worked through these people that we were able to get this home. Oh, my goodness. And, and quite frankly, we really didn't anticipate getting this one 
uh, why don't you well, tell our story here? <laughs> that's another God thing. We had uh, we were working with a realtor, uh, had looked at many, many resales, didn't even consider a new home. We were in this neighborhood looking at a resale. Uh, it just was not the right size for us, was not going to work out. Uh, so we had sort of decided on maybe going to another neighborhood. In the meantime, though, when we were in this neighborhood, we saw this particular house, a spec home, mm-hmm. already finished, <laughs> ready to be moved into. Uh, the, the price was much higher than what we could afford. And um, Dylan, I'm getting this all mixed up here. <laughs> you need to help me. The other neighborhood, we gave them an offer. Mm -hmm. Uh, They would not accept it. So Dillard was talking to our realtor, and I said, well, why don't you just ask the realtor to check on the spec house in the other neighborhood and just see if they will even consider our Mm -hmm. offer. Sure. Well, would you believe they did? They considered our offer. (laughs) They said, we'll do it if you can close, if we can close by the end of the year. And, this was and that's what December. we did. This early, December. early December. This, that's what we did. And, uh, and we were able to uh, to get all of that accomplished and, and to get in here. Uh, at by that, December uh, the 30th. By December 30th. We really were. So all along, you know, it, it, the provision of, of the Lord, the intervention, His intervention in this process, uh, we lost both cars. Uh, I had just bought a new Prius that had about 1,200 miles on it. But fortunately, our comprehensive covered the automobiles, but obviously I could not afford to replace mine, uh, and and we were going to go ahead and replace hers. Well, uh, again, uh, one of these friends uh, mentioned to another friend, a long-term friend, uh, that he had some extra vehicles through the years because he would never sell one. And uh, so... uh, he asked him, said, well, you know, would you be willing to, to lend Dillard this, this automobile to like it? So he said, well, let's just give it to him. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, me. so he sends me a title for $1 for this automobile. Me. And again, these are, you know, these are very, very, very devout Christian people. So the one, you know, the one thing that we, we've, we've seen throughout it was God's provision. But, but it was also God's preparation. On the Sunday before this happened, the message was within the message this statement was made as a christian you are not immune from any experience that a non-christian is going to experience in this world the only difference is you don't have to go through it alone oh my goodness this was a sunday before sunday before sunday before the flood and, and that you know that immediately came to my mind and and as you said earlier, you know, our wives, the, the ladies are wired differently than we are. They, they, their emotions are different from ours. And, uh, and I thought, you know, and looking back on that, I thought, well, you know, the peace we've experienced through this. Maybe it's just maybe we're going to experience post-traumatic syndrome <laughs> after we come to realize, you know, what what we've been through here. I was sitting in church and and it, several years ago, I, I had memorized this particular verse from Scripture, and as I was sitting there, it just came to me, and I thought, oh, Lord, you are so good because this is just so perfect for this particular time. And it's from Psalm 62, verses 1 and 2. My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. But they just said it all to me, that, that my soul finds rest in God alone. And you know what? He proved that scripture to you. He proved how faithful he was uh, and is. What an emotional experience. Uh, obviously, this has had to, had to be. I'm sitting here with goosebumps over all of the God things that happened and the people that came to your rescue in the first place uh, because somebody saw lights on in your house and how all these things happened that God obviously orchestrated. Orchestrated. Now, uh, we need to close. You know, you can't promise other folks, our listeners, 
that experience trials like you've done or are experiencing other trials. You can't promise to them that God is going to do for them what he did for you. Absolutely. But other than dependence on the Lord, what advice would you to give to listeners who are either experiencing that valley or will experience that valley, both believers and not yet believers? For believers, uh, I think my advice would be, in addition to, to the promises of God in His Word, read the prerequisites to those promises. Oh. Because most of those promises are conditional promises. Yes, they are. If before them. And, and, and before we start claiming promises, we, we really need to look and examine whether or not we're meeting the, the prerequisites. For the pre-Christian, uh, I would just say, apart from a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ, you really can't experience that peace because before you can experience His peace, you have to experience His presence. Oh, boy. How true. What a, what a great, great, great story of God's faithfulness. And I want to tell you how much I appreciate uh, your willingness to share this uh, very personal story, but very exciting story. And uh, I know you're going to be in a, what you've said today will be an encouragement to some of our listeners. I, I do have one more question. I think I know the answer, but would you say that this series of interventions, as you call them, was a tremendous God thing? Yes. <laughs> Unquestionably. Most definitely. Unquestionably. Thank you, folks. We, we really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you for that. Wow, what a great half hour this has been. Tune in next time for more great God Thing stories and tell all your friends to tune in too. Oh yeah, one more thing. If you or someone you know has a verifiable story which needs to be told, please email a brief summary to us at mystory at itsagodthingradio.com. That's my story, all one word, at itsagodthingradio.com. See you next time. Hey, hey.